the considering the cost which is involved in the meniscal tear i think inside out is then uh, one of the uh, wonderful tool to minimize your cost for the any back handle meniscal tear so previously we don't have this kind of instrumentations where you can manage even most of the meniscal back handle tear can be managed with the just inside out uh, uh, technique with the help of these all the cannulas which is available now so that's how it is very important in this so previously what we thought is that when whenever you have the posterior horn tear we can use only all inside repair when you have an a body we use an inside out or an outside in technique when you have an anterior horn what we do you mostly we use an outside in uh, repair because you cannot reach the because you cannot reach through the cannula we don't have that we didn't have that specific cannulas so this is the most commonly used repair which we do uh, by the surgeons and the most important thing is the position of the uh, knee when you do the repair is the key so when you do a medial meniscus repair you should have a 15 to 45 degrees of flexion with the valgus force to allow adequate visualization and access if it is tight even after that then you do the pike resting to open it up so that you don't want to damage the cartilage and the lateral position normally what you do the figure of four position and do an internal rotation so that will open up your lateral joint space sometimes it will open up in very good in 90 degree sometimes in 40 degree sometimes in 30 degree so you try to see the movement which movement it opens up then you do that so that the lateral compartment is always is a tricky one and also it also protects the peroneal nerve when you do the inside out uh, this thing i think pike resting all of you know how to do that you know that 16 gauge needle or 18 gauge needle just in the posterior medial joint line above the joint line over the femoral side or the tibial side we are just do some trephining just make a small uh, two to th three or four trephining it is just opens up the joint space so it is it's almost now imperative that we should use the pike resting when you do a pike handle repair because otherwise you will be struggling and also you are damaging the cartilage so i think most of us surgeons now we use a pike resting when you do a pike handle tear if the joint is tough so we can use a number fiber wire or you can use a mini tape which is available a mini suture tapes like this it comes with the needles with the, each one is a disposable but some companies even comes with the needle separately with the thread separately so it's still that minimizes the cost but this makes you the job easier and faster so previously i remember when i do on a back handle tear it takes at least one hour now we can make it finish in 20 minutes time if you have a good team where just you had to just keep the cannula that directs you then our nurses keep on putting the needle and the other assistants taking out the needle outside so it makes your job so easier and uh, uh, so you are you saving lot of time by using this kind of needles with uh, the typical cannulas which they have so uh, this is the zone navigator this is the what i use now currently it's an excellent tool uh, you need just two handles one handle covers the posterior horn and the middle horn other covers the uh, basically covers the anterior horn and the middle horn you can see that this one is the most useful one in my opinion where the middle and the anterior where outside in technique which use for anterior horn naturally it takes lot of time you need more skills than this inside out so outside in needs more skill because you have to use the two uh, needles and you have to pass the nine tall loop and you can take it out and so each stitch it takes at least 3 uh, four minutes for four minutes but with the adventure of this cannulas with the good cannula you can just come around to the anterior horn just pass the needle so you don't need to do even outside in technique for the anterior horn so that's how this makes you very very simple you can see that the this is the posterior it can reach up to the posterior horn where you can avoid all inside not avoid all inside but if the patient is not able to afford you can make slightly more pike crusting you can have a more valgus force so that you can go almost in the posterior horn so that you can avoid the neurovascular injuries and as i said that anterior cannula it is a uh, uh, for anterior horn also it is very very useful and uh, this is the animation video uh, which we can how to use this uh, cannulas uh, this is this is the cannula which is used for the posterior horn and the middle horn and the more curvature which you have which can be used for the anterior cannula you can see the how far it reaches there so which you can you avoid the outside technique even the anterior horn tear can be covered with your inside technique it's a very simple where you just put the needle and keep just keep on pushing that you it passes the needle even you no need to push the needle so it's a very very simple technique and this mini uh, 20 uh, mini suture tape gives you the uh, minimum cut off even the tissue quality is bad the suture tape the mini suture tape gives you the, the so this is how you insert the needle then you can use the um this uh, handle to just to push the uh, needle the another advantage of using this is that you have a very good control 
the meniscal, the inside out stitch, not just for the stitching alone, it also helps you to, uh, you can manipulate your reduction. So you can always push the, use the uh, needle first into the torn portion of your inner portion and you can take lift up, lift down, you can, you can move around so that you can, the reduction can be perfect. So this is uh, a 28 years old male patient, pain and instability for the seven years duration and a recent fall four months before. So this patient had an old ACL tear, but patient presented with a new meniscal tear. So it is very common, it is like morning when we discussed. So any ACL deficient patient comes with the pain and locking with the recent injury, you should don't think that meniscal tear cannot be repaired. Many, most of the times, it could be a recent meniscal tear. So you should counsel the patient that these patients require a meniscal repair. So even the new ACL, or old ACL cases, you may need to have all the armamentarium to do a meniscus repair. So this is just a periphery, uh, periphery, uh, peripheral tear, which I do a pie crusting. So what happens, this is the inside out cannula. So in this case, which we, I could pass the needle, so I didn't do a much pie crusting here. So this is the inside out. You can use the mattress stitches and also you can use the vertical stitches. So you take uh, the cannula, just guide you to where to put the next mattress stitch over there. So that is how you pass the needle there, then you take it from outside. Your assistant is taking outside, that's how that your inside out matters. At the same time, you alternate with the vertical stitches, one over the capsule and one over the meniscus. We know that vertical stitch has got more mechanical strength than the mattress stitch. So we can alternate the one vertical and water one mattress stitch. So that's how I do. Uh, then. then you do at least one in superior surface and one in inferior surface. So that gives you the uh, balance of your uh, meniscus because when you do only superior inside out technique it is going to avert your meniscus so you have to put a uh, 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 one or two inside uh, inferior surface meniscus so how to do that once you do the superior surface ask the assistant to just pull the stitches so already it, it, it averts so that the visualization will be better otherwise you will be struggling to see the uh, uh, the tear under surface, inferior surface. So you can just pull the stitches of the superior surface that will avert it, then you can make an inferior stitch. So that's how you use that. When you do the posterior horn, if you want to do an uh, inside out by posterior, uh, for the posterior horn tear, then safety incision is must. So you, you had, I think all of you know how to make the safety incision in the medial side. You make a two to three centimeter incision posterior to the MCL and it goes between the sartorius posteriorly by, uh, that protects the saphenous, saphenous nerve and goes between the interval, inter, interval between the posterior medial capsule and the middle head of gas stroke to, the, uh, to assess the capsule. At the same way, lateral side incision where you make a uh, incision posterior to the LCL and its approach between the biceps femoris and the iliotibial band anteriorly, biceps posteriorly, iliotibial anteriorly, then go some uh, further than you where your nerves lies and posteriorly. So uh, this also this kind of uh, spatulas can be very helpful when you do when you put the needle. If you are worried about when you go especially posterior horn, this will helps you to take out the needle by making the safety incision so that you can uh, avoid the neurovascular injury. So, and as I said that if you are not going through the posterior horn, you don't need to make a safety incision. As I showed in the morning, it, is, it doesn't go into that that much uh, posteriorly. I usually do a percutaneous incision, make a small incision and bring it out that through that uh, small, small incision and uh, I tie it up. As I showed in the morning, this case again is the old uh, uh, injury. You prepare it. You do the multiple stitches. This is mainly I uh, I wanted to show for the, because it is used for the anterior horn. This you can see that the cannula, how far it comes anteriorly, so that I no need to use the outside in technique at all. And also I can see that when you use the needle, the needle can be uh, used to, to lift the meniscus up and down so that it matches your border of your tear. So otherwise you can mismatch when you do a inside out repair. So that is also very, very important. So you need a one, uh, usually I do one alternate, one mattress, uh, vertical and mattress. So that gives the enough strength. As I already said that if you do only superior surface, it always, it reverts the meniscus. So it requires uh, one or two inferior surface uh, inside out stitches. So, so that makes the meniscus balance like this. So that you can see that when it is completely reduced, the under it is stable. Then you assess the stability of the meniscus. It looks very good. So this is what I told again, they showed in the morning also this case. So I said that, that is where your safety incision comes. So you can see that my probe shows the safety incision. If you are not going into the posterior horn, if you are doing, okay, handling only the body and the anterior horn, then I don't I need to do the uh, safety incision. Then after making the, all the, taking all the needles out, I make a, make a small incision 
uh, horizontal incision of 1 to 2 cm and take out all the threads through that subcutaneously and uh, you tie all the knots with a sliding knot or the simple knots whatever you know uh, it's it's a time saving and make it quicker when you do the acl with the back and tear or a multi ligament injury with the multi back and tear so finally it gives the, all the stability through the inside of course biologics we use when you have a isolated back and tear we use the biologics when you do a concomitant acl reconstruction most often we don't do that because you, you have the biology from your tunnel preparations so the, you do the uh, fibrin clove or this uh, uh, venting which we do it for that thank you and i don't want to lose the another opportunity to <laughs> i said requesting your support for my vice presidential candidature which selection comes in march please tell your friends also and also i invite you all of you for ganga arthroscopy course in march uh, which we are planning for a 25 life surgeries and a toll in shoulder and toll in knee and also we are covering in the ankle and the wrist on the sunday half day Thank you very much. Uh